Hello there, and welcome to What's Bubbling in Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at some changes in Adobe Animate and how we bring in shapes from Adobe Animate into Zim. Here's the Zim site now at zimjs.com, where you also have a chance to win a prize if you enter your Zim Zap. We're having those judged. There's been a few entries so far, and we're doing this for 10 months. So uh, come on in and show us your zaps. There's no pressure. This is fun. We're all, we all like this stuff. So come on in, show us your zaps. It doesn't matter how, how good, how bad, etc. We just uh, love you to partake. So we're going to go to the code section here, and in the code section, underneath our templates, there's the Zim Shim. Now that allows you to code in Animate and export uh, through CreateJS. Hello, Florin. <laughs> export through create uh, through Adobe Animate to CreateJS, and it all works as Zim because Zim is built on CreateJS. So you're welcome to. Hey, I'm glad you're live. <laughs> Off you go. Uh, you're welcome to use that technique. However, we usually like to code right just in an editor and not go through the animate process. So if you haven't tried that, please do. Just load the template and see how it goes without having to work with animate. There's lots of things you can do without animate. Um, on the other hand, animate's good for making shapes. So if you want to make shapes, well, <laughs> Lately, we've been making shapes just with our blobs, so blobs and squiggles to make shapes. Uh, that's just as easy. You can go to, why don't we show you, if you go to Zim here, and then in the code section as well, we'll scroll on. Oh, hey, <laughs> we were in the code section, were we? If you scroll on down to our pizzazz right here, there's paths. So if you press paths, oh, there's, there's the last path that I was working on, which was a bit of a mess. But uh, anyway, there's menus and you can get these paths and, and you can uh, make your own paths. Now, they're not filled here, but when you bring them in, if you, you grab the code here, it doesn't matter. You put that into a, a blob and you can choose the fill of the blob or the, the outline of the blob, the border of the blob, that kind of stuff. All right, so I find this just as easy to make a blob and there you've got your shapes. But if you want to, if you're used to using animate or want to make an animate shape, let's show you how we can do that. So here we are in animate. We might make a rectangle like that. Uh, the border doesn't matter. So you may as well get rid of the border because it's a pain in the neck. You pick up that and the border stays, right? So anyway, you're welcome to just not make a border or have your settings down here for no border. And you can add the border later in code. So there's no real reason to keep track of a border. So say we make a shape. Like, uh, like that. We won't spend too long doing it. <laughs> there's, our, there's our bat shape. We seem to be on a bat shape theme. All right. Now, I used to want to put that up here because it, it puts the X and or it puts the X and Y or the zero zero of the origin at the center of the shape. So it'll do that automatically. And then sometimes to um, coordinate it, I would put the center of it up there. But uh, you don't have to. So I'm going to show you a little equation that you can use that will handle this for us because uh, there's some confusions. First confusion, and this is why we've done the bubbling, is Adobe now defaults to turning this into a bitmap rather than uh, rather than keeping it as the shape with the vector shape, that is. So if we were to export here, uh, let's do it, file, export, or publish, sorry, publish. No, I didn't actually want to publish, but th oh, that's fine. It says right up here, I don't know if you can see it, that it's successfully into one sprite sheet. It's packed the bitmap into one sprite sheet. So uh, that will provide perhaps better performance on mobile, although mobile devices now are fast enough that it doesn't really, they don't really mind the vector. But the point was here, we were wanting a vector so that we could maybe scale it later or adjust it. We didn't want a bitmap. So it used to be that the export settings or the publish settings would default to exporting the, um, the vector. Now they don't. So if you look under Publish Settings, More Settings, the way you fix that, it's a bit confusing, is under Images here. You can't just turn off images. That doesn't work. But rather than a texture, you choose Image Assets, which to me doesn't quite make sense. So it's going to publish this supposedly as an Image Asset, but actually 
um, exports it as a vector asset. I guess image can be vector. I, you know, I suppose why not? I usually think of an image as being a bitmap, but uh, whatever, you know, vector assets might have been better to say here, more specific. So image assets and then publish. All right, so now we leave animate and we come into some code. Uh, let's go find that. What it it uh, you'll you'll need to have saved that file as something, and that's the the canvas. Uh, that's the I think canvas is now default in Adobe Animate, and that will publish out to your CreateJS by default as well. So uh, animate right here is the animate.js happens to be the same name as the file, which was animate, and this is the JS file that comes in here. So here's the JS file, and there indeed is the shape. So if you don't adjust that, you won't get this shape. You'll only get this uh, bitmap in there. All right. So here's the shape. Note that we can change easily change the color. We can easily add the the stroke and stuff if we if we need that, including a dash stroke. And this is the code right here that made that shape. Now you can make more complicated shapes uh, with more points and all that kind of stuff, and you'll get more code here. But uh, it always looks like this path parameter right here. So we're going to copy this. Copy. And we'll come on into Zim. So here we are in Zim, the latest template in Zim. This is our code. Uh, ignore this for now. That's our little conversion that we'll get to in just a sec. But what basically what we want to do is make a new shape in Zim. We will then dot um, fill the shape and we'll make it black. Oh, let's make it blue. Some <laughs> blood. <laughs> Funny smelling of blood. Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Let's have a look at that again. Blood. <laughs> Rather than two O's. Uh, anyway, we want blue. Let's bring that up a bit for you. Blue. And then we would paste our path. So here is our fill. And we can add a stroke if we wanted to, or we don't need a fill. We could just stroke it. <laughs> Baby stroke it. Uh, but anyway, there's our path right there. And then in in um, the latest Zim, we can just dot center that, for instance. So there we are dot centering. Why don't we drop that down to the next line there? And let's have a look. We refresh here, or open in browser, open in browser, and there it is. There's our our object. So this is uh, Zim. So we can dot drag that. Darg. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been coding too much. I think a coder's head right now. Uh, where is it? There we go. And we refresh, and now we can pick that up and drag it. Cool, huh? And if we wanted our, our border, we could have done that again with this s dot s for uh, the fill, and um, we can make that what color? Pink. And how dot s s would be the stroke size, and we can make that three. All right. And come on back to our browser. We got a lot of things open, huh? And there you go. There's the stroke uh, pink put on that. And uh, of course, scale it, rotate it, etc., etc. Now, one of the things though is this has no bounds. So if we dot uh, outline it like that and try and uh, deal with with that, we refresh here, and if we F12, it says Zim methods outline, please set bounds on object. So we can't outline it if it has no bounds. Shapes don't naturally have a bounds. So uh, let's put in some bounds, 100, 100. Let's see what happens to this shape. Um, here it is. We do. There's the bounds. So note that the bounds, if 100, 100, we're just starting right in the middle there. Bing. So as mentioned, the x, the z, the x and y, that's called the origin. The origin of the shape is actually in the middle of the shape. So some of the shape is drawn in the negative x and y, and some of the shape is drawn in the positive x and the y. So we just guessed at 100, 100, and that's what it's given us. Now, uh, that's the default width and height in here, but if we throw a couple other ones in here, such as minus 100, minus 100, Let's see what that gives us. What it would give us is minus 100 in the x, minus 100 in the y, and then a width and a height of 100. Uh, we probably wanted just 50, didn't we? OK, let's try that. That keeps it a bit balanced. You see how that's negative 50s, and then 100s is the width and the height. 
So we refresh here, and you get something that looks like this. Okay, so we're getting there. We could, you know, we could just carry on until we get the right numbers, and that would put the right bounds on the shape. You probably do want the right bounds because if you were to say uh, pose this on the right hand side here it would pose the bounds on the right hand side like that. If you do hit test, by default, hit test check the bounds first. So nothing would hit out here unless you tell the hit test to turn the bounds off, but then it's slower. So it's good to have the right size bounds when you're doing certain things. You don't always need them, but uh, let me show you how we can get the right size then. Now, unfortunately, back in this code, uh, we, we get some numbers and they look good. <laughs> they look like they should be good. Look, nominal bounds. It's, it's actually calculating the nominal bounds. But this is the x of those bounds, the y of the bounds, and this is the width of the bounds and the height of the bounds. And we're kind of looking at it going, uh. and if you put these numbers in here, so you just kind of say, oh, right, there, let's take these nominal bounds and put them right in here like this. All right, they looked a bit weird, but those were supposed to be the bounds. The shape receives the bounds. Okay, so we save that and we refresh here. It's kind of like, what the heck? <laughs> so you can see that there's a, a disparency here <laughs> between between those numbers. And you're like, uh, right? Well, maybe it has something to do, and you kind of come up here, maybe it has something to do with this shape.set transform where we've got two more numbers here that are presumably, or I thought they'd be like maybe the X and the Y, but that's actually the X and the Y as you're drawing inside the shape is different than positioning the overall shape at X and Y. Anyway, these numbers are all kind of uh, confusing looking. So what I'm going to do is copy them from here. I'll copy that one and just tuck it up here. It's called the transform. Now we don't want to run that transform, so we'll just do that. And here's the other one right here, the nominal bounds, uh, whatever. You just need to get the numbers. So just, you know, need the whole thing. And so these are the bounds right here. We'll put. Well, you know what? We could have put the other one underneath there as well. So what we're doing is we're going to take these numbers right here, such as that one, and put it in the X transform, and take this number and put it in the Y transform. Take these numbers and put them in the bounds X. This relates to the bounds, the bounds X, the bounds Y, like that, the bound width, and the bound height. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Uh, super. And then you run a little formula on it. <laughs> it wasn't terribly fun to calculate, by the way. The bounds x <clears throat> plus the bounds width minus the x times 2 will get us the actual width of it. And the height is the bounds y plus the bounds height minus the y position that they've, they've uh, transformed gives us the height of it. So that's the width and the height that we can put in right here. Width and height of the shape. Now this part is how much it moves over to the left. And if it's centered there, then we want to move over the width divided by 2. And we want to move over the height divided by 2 like we did before. And there you go. So now we will get, if we open up here, <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Oopsies. Did we mess something up? Let's have a look. Uh, let's see. Minus. There we are. Not too bad. Minus the width divided by 2. Minus the, the height divided by 2. And... Ta-da! <laughs> there is um, the right bounds for it based on the CreateJS numbers. So uh, apologies there. You know, not much to do about it. Of course, you could, if you don't want to bother doing all that, you could have just spent uh, you know half a minute, a minute, just putting in the right numbers until you got your own numbers there. All right, so that has been, or this has been, uh, what's bubbling at Zim? Some changes in Adobe Animate's default export and how to bring in shapes again in um, into Zim from Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract. Hopefully this was helpful for you, uh, for those of you who 
are using the Adobe Animate. Ciao.